evening and uh, add my greetings to everybody else that led us so beautifully in, in worship this morning. I'm so glad that you're here on uh, the eve of a very important week in the life of our congregation. I will so enjoy visiting the classes this week and encouraging our workers this week and some of my favorite time is just being out on the lawn and on the steps and and just uh, striking up some conversations with the parents and families that bring their children here and uh, getting to know them for brief moments but inviting them back to uh, making um, learning about God and worshiping him an everyday part of their life and for some not just a week but to be here every week and through the week to uh, train up the children in the way they should go so it's an important time uh, to, to be together well in just a minute we will be in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 1 Corinthians chapter 2 now we're going to talk today about the importance of being filled with the Spirit. We've been singing about being filled with the Spirit and the Holy Spirit meeting us here. Uh, in last, this past week, I was having a conversation with one of our denominational colleagues from Richmond, and we were talking and meeting about some other things, but one of the things that we talked about he was sharing that they were discovering uh, in our state Baptist churches and also throughout the country and with all of our denominations that noticing that the evangelism emphasis over the last decade has really focused on the salvation message, which it should. It's, it's been focusing on uh, maybe what we would hear in a revival or a crusade or decades ago, maybe if you went to a Billy Graham evangelism conference and we would hear that message of Jesus Christ and a message of the cross, of the resurrection, and that we needed to confess our sins and be saved and saved for eternity. What we haven't done so well with in the last decades is following up with those initial decisions that were made and going deeper in our faith and working with boys and girls, men and women, to go to the next level. What does this salvation experience mean? Uh, what uh, does now the New Testament and the Old Testament teach about God and understanding uh, the deeper meanings of Christianity so that converts to Christianity can now become disciples of Jesus and understand more fully who they're following. And because we haven't done this, he was saying there we're discovering now in our churches in individuals, in our families, with our leaders, that we're seeing some more immature theology, some immature behaviors, some, some not so well-known understanding of the deeper things of our faith. And it comes out in disagreements in churches, arguments, it comes out in strained relationships with friends and with family and maybe with spouses. And a lot of this is due to not going deeper in our relationship with Christ. And you know, that's what we have been discussing these last four or five weeks. We have been seeing that in order to grow and become spiritual Christians, we need to learn to discipline our will, our minds, our bodies, our emotions. We need to learn to turn those over 
to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit have control of that. That's one way that we go deeper in our faith and are not so easily led astray. Now, what we've been looking at is directly connected to the conversation I had with that denominational leader. And it also concerns the emphasis that the New Testament places us continuing to mature as believers in Jesus, to continuing to understand the deeper things of God. And the only way to do that, we're going to discover this morning, is to be led by the Spirit, is to be taught by the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can move and not be babes, as Paul said, in Jesus Christ, but to become mature in Jesus Christ. So Paul addresses all of these issues and concerns to the Corinthian church who's having some of the same problems. So now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me begin with, um, with verse 6. I'm just going to read verse 6 through 9. And Paul is going to talk here a little bit about um, our need to go deeper in our faith. Paul says this. He says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. Now, one thing that Paul is saying in here is that the goal of every believer is to become more mature. We just said that. Now, in the New Testament and, and in the things that Paul and Peter and the rest of the apostles taught these early Christian churches, there were two types of teaching in the New Testament. The first type of teaching is what we call the kerygma, the kerygma. That's the Greek word. It, um, it basically means preaching, but it's the teaching about Jesus that's the basic but powerful gospel message of Christ. It's the kind of teaching that Paul uses on the day of Pentecost when he, speak, uh, when he speaks to thousands that Peter uses. He speaks to thousands there. It's the type of teaching that Paul would use as he would enter these different cities, Philippi, you know, Ephesus, Corinth, all of these different cities of the Roman world. And he would preach the basic message of salvation. Jesus came, born of a virgin, taught us how to live, lived a perfect life, crucified on the cross because of you and I's sin. God raised him from the dead. If you believe Jesus is the Son of God, can forgive you of your sin, will raise you to life one day when you die. Believe that, ask Christ in your heart, you will be saved. That's the kerygma. That's the simple message of Jesus Christ. And this was spread and preached all over the world. It still is today. This will be the type of teaching that we will share this week in vacation Bible school, isn't it? The basic message, the simple message of Jesus that we all need to hear and that we all need to receive in our hearts to belong to Christ. Now, after this simple message of Christ that all of these thousands are coming to know him, and now today as millions have come to know Jesus, 
there was a second teaching in the New Testament, a deeper teaching. It was the the, the Dake teaching. It was the deeper teaching that explained now what this means to follow Jesus. It was the teaching that explained Christian theology. It was the teaching that disciplined each believer. It's this deeper teaching that Paul is talking about in this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's this deeper teaching that, that Paul is saying that we need to be mature in Jesus Christ. Not just staying with salvation. Not just staying with, uh, you know, I've asked Christ to forgive me my sins and I'm going to heaven. That's great, but that's not where Jesus wants us to continue to go and grow until we meet him face to face, is it? We need this deeper teaching. And this maturing in the faith was crucial to Paul. Christians, he would say, early in chapter 3, were not to remain as babes in their faith. They were to continue to grow. This is that deeper teaching that my friend was talking about, wasn't he? When he's saying, we've explained to people how to be saved, but we're not doing a good job in teaching and explaining to people how to walk in their faith, how to allow the Spirit to control them in life. And that's when we begin to show the love of Jesus to everyone. When we go deeper, that's when we care for those less fortunate. That's when we have more patience with each other. That's when we begin growing as Christians and can really make a difference in the world. We become servants of Jesus Christ. So how do we get there? We know we need to go deeper in our faith. Well, Paul goes on to say this. The truth is, it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that reveals these greater depths of God, isn't it? Only the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 10. These are the things God has revealed to us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And what we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we, uh, we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. What's Paul saying? What he's saying is God's true wisdom, God's true teaching, the deeper teaching is revealed only by the Holy Spirit that's within you. When you accept Christ as Savior, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, into your life, into your mind. And that's when the Spirit can begin to teach. That's because God is the only one that knows himself fully. Can any of us here, can I teach the things of God? Can I really tell you who God is? The depths of God, what God is like? No, I'm just a human being. But God knows himself, and God can teach us about himself. And Paul uses the illustration to explain this of us. Um, Only you, as an individual, know your own deep thoughts, don't you? Only you know your own imagination. Only you really know your deep dreams or your fears or the intents that you have in life. You only, you and you only know what you think and ruminate and are on your mind all the time. 
Nobody else knows what's going on in your mind. We've seen some TV shows and some movies about somebody all of a sudden gets a superpower of reading somebody's mind, knowing what they say. And I think one of the movies was even a comedy, because it is comical, because we really don't want to know what everybody's thinking, right? Especially when you're talking to them. I don't know. I don't want to know what you're thinking about me right now. Or that many of you are not thinking about this sermon right now. You're thinking about what you're going to do after this sermon. You know, we don't know what each other think. Those are very personal, intimate thoughts. And Paul says it's the same with God. We don't know what's in God's mind, in his heart. We know what he's revealed to us. We know what he's revealed to us in Scripture and through preaching and teaching. But we don't know the intimate things of God, do we? But Paul is saying that the only way that we're going to know that, that we can know that, is God himself can teach us. And that's one of the roles of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? The Spirit can teach us those deeper things of God. Jesus can go deeper in our lives if we allow him, allow him to through the Holy Spirit. How does this come about? Well, it comes about only with those disciplines, those basics we've talked about before. Consistent prayer, consistent listening to God, remaining in God's Word, living out the teachings of Jesus. We allow the Spirit to begin to teach us. And what we'll discover is an even deeper beauty of our faith. A deeper peace that's beyond understanding. Uh, a different kind of joy that can never be taken from us. A power that increases our faith and, and gives us courage to eventually share this gospel message with other people as we witness. That's what's at stake of going deeper and maturing in Jesus and not just staying as babes in Christ. So there's a choice. Paul says that for the Christian, the believer, not talking about the unbeliever, we'll talk about that in a second, we can live life with or without the help of the Spirit. We have that choice. Look at verses 14 through 16. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I have talked with many a frustrated Christian who cannot understand why a dear friend or a family member cannot grasp spiritual truths. They say, I explain this to them. I tell them about Christianity. I tell them why I behave this way or why I can't do some of the things and participate in some of the things they want me to. Um, I see that they're angry when a loved one is suffering in the hospital. I've been with people who can't get over a death of a loved one and can't understand why God would do that. And I just can't seem to get through to them what I know in my heart. Have you ever experienced that? That frustration? And most of the time, after I've listened a long time, I refer them to this passage, especially verse 14. I remind them that until a person accepts Jesus Christ as Savior, until their friend or family member asks Christ in their heart and then has the Holy Spirit within them to teach them these deeper truths of God, these, these different parts of the beautiful part of God and his will 
they will never understand. There are some things in life, the spiritual things in life, that we just cannot understand without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit. We grieve as Christians as others do not grieve, the Bible says. We grieve, it hurts, we go through the process of grief, but in the back of our minds and eventually in the forefront of our minds, we know that our loved one who knows Jesus Christ is in glory with him, don't we? We understand that. We can conceive that. Our faith tells us that's true because the Holy Spirit testifies to us that it's true. If we don't have the Holy Spirit in us, we just can't understand that. That's what Paul is saying, the need to go deeper. And the two, there's two words here, in, in biblical views of life and in Paul's thought that he uses two different words that mean spirit, having what spirit is guiding us in two different ways. There's the sukaikos, that's the spirit, that is the physical life that we all have. It's the life that, that's breathed into us by God, that God talks about in Genesis. We're breathed life into us by God, and we become a living soul. That's the life we have of God. It's, it's the life that connects us in many ways with the rest of God's creation. It's, and it's the person who sees this earthly life as only that, a life given to us that's finite, that'll end one day, and that life never moves beyond just satisfying their human urges and their human needs. That's as far as life goes. That's the only spirit of life that they understand. I'm only going to do what makes me feel good, what makes me get ahead in life, what helps me achieve to be number one or make more money or have more possessions or just makes me feel good. That's life. We all have that spirit, <laughs> that soul of life. Now, the other spirit word that Paul uses throughout the New Testament is, is pneumatikos. Pneumatikos. And this is the person who doesn't just have the natural life breathed into him or her. It's the one who has asked Christ in their life and has had the Holy Spirit breathe into them. The pneuma, the God Spirit, Christ's Spirit. It's a rekindling of the life of the person God created you for, who he really wants you to be. And the only way you can become and be filled with that powerful Spirit is through Jesus Christ. It's the person who's sensitive to this Holy Spirit within them. It's the, the Christian who's guided by the Holy Spirit. It's the Christian who's filled with the Holy Spirit and sees the Spirit of God working all around him or her. What Paul is saying is that there is a difference between the person who lives and is driven by just our natural thinking, who's driven by the world standards, versus the person who listens and lives by God's Holy Spirit that has come to dwell in their life. There's a difference there, isn't it? N.T. Wright, the modern theologian, says, it's someone who is directed and led simply by the ordinary human interior life rather than by the fresh, gospel-driven wisdom or energy given by God's Spirit. We have a choice of what and who is going to drive us. Ourselves, our urges, our desires as human beings, or are we going to be driven by the Holy Spirit of God? The natural person simply cannot understand when the conversation turns to the deeper things of the Spirit. 
without the spirit. It's like having a novice and an expert observing the same event. A skilled musician, if Mary and I go to a concert, a symphony, I'm going to enjoy the music and be moved by the music. She's going to understand the deeper meaning of that sympathy, symphony, isn't she? She's going to hear the flute and the oboe and the, and the violin and how they all come together. She may even see the musical notes in her mind as they're played. She's going to know if they miss a note, I ain't even going to realize it. She's going to experience it in more depth. It's like an athlete who is going to notice and understand the deeper strategies of the football game even more than the most avid of fan, right? The athletes that played the game, the athlete that knows what every player is doing, the athlete that knows the strategy versus the avid fan, the Monday morning quarterback who thinks they know what's best for the team. Y'all remember that when the Redskins start losing. <laughs> so how do we tap in to going deeper with the Spirit? How do we begin to glimpse having this mind of Christ? I mentioned it earlier. First, read the Word of God daily, and not only read it, but live the Word. Allow your prayer life to grow. Give time, not just to speaking, but to silence, and ask the Spirit to speak to you in silence. Get involved in a ministry. God will reveal the different, the, the, the difficult, the deeper aspects of faith as you serve others in his name. When you go on a mission trip, whether it's across the street, the boys and girls home, to Peru, you're going to be changed more than the people you change and go to change because the Spirit is going to speak to you deeper, isn't it? That's just a fact. Invite others to church. Share your faith. You go deeper. The Spirit teaches you. You're controlled by the Spirit when you begin to risk and you begin to serve in the Lord's name. We learn by risking. We don't learn much by playing it safe. Another church leader and I were talking, and he said he heard in a conference a significant statement based on church research. He heard that one, the one common denominator of really healthy churches, of growing churches, but churches that were healthy and that they loved one another, they loved the commu community, they got along, they were going deeper in their faith. The, the common denominator of these churches was that a large percentage of the church were engaged in personal daily scripture reading. That between the services, between the Sunday school classes, between the serving, the members of these churches knew the importance of their own personal time reading God's word, praying, and going deeper. I'm not surprised that's a common denominator that's what Paul is talking about. So I want to challenge you and invite you to go deeper, to lean on the Holy Spirit, to trust in the Spirit of God versus trusting in yourself. Now, yes and no, we, no, we can't know and understand the deeper things of God. But one thing that everybody here can understand, whether you know Jesus Christ as personal Savior yet or not, the one thing, Thing that the Spirit can get through to you and make you understand and convict you to do is to initially accept that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus died on the cross for your sin, and that God raised him from the dead, and that God can forgive your sin and raise you from the dead and give you eternal life. The Spirit can break through your heart right now and let you know that that's real. The deeper things of faith, you'll learn them later. If you're waiting to know everything about God before you come 
and accept Christ as Savior and follow Him in baptism, you're going to be waiting beyond eternity. Because you can't know that until you take that first step. Are you here and ready to take that first step today? To ask Christ in your heart the first time to that initial surface point of belief and then let Jesus teach you? Or have you taken that first step and you're stuck in the process? You would be what Paul says, you're still a babe in Jesus Christ. You're, you're nourishing yourself on spiritual milk. You need some solid food. Serve the Lord. Pray more. Get involved in a small group. Pray to the Holy Spirit to take you deeper. Those are the two challenges that Jesus gives us today through his servant Paul and through all of us who attempt to go deeper. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word, for salvation, and and God, just for, for staying in us and wanting us to know your deeper character, your deeper personality, your deeper love. We know the only way to do that, Lord, is through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, go deeper in us and meet us here. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.